Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us on uh, somewhat short notice today. We have an important announcement today on a, uh, a downtown development project, specifically the Village on the River parking ramp today. By way of background, in the spring of 2018, a week before I took office as your mayor, the groundbreaking event was held for the Village on the River project. City leaders and the developer for the project stood side by side for the announcement of a public-private partnership that was to produce a 15-story mixed-use development. The controversy surrounding the project and the process used by the previous administration to enter that partnership was one of the first issues I faced as your mayor. After working with my team to analyze the previously signed development agreements and to determine what steps needed to take place to meet the city's obligation in that partnership, I held a press conference in Carnegie Hall to advise the public my support moving forward. I'm here again to tell you that it's time to move forward. In the spring of 2019, after numerous meetings with the developer, the architect, the general contractor, city staff, and the city's internal and retained council, it was determined that in order for the project to protect the city's best interests in the parking ramp that we had invested in, it was necessary to call for the termination of that development agreement. The developer commenced litigation and we have subsequently been in settlement discussions to find a way forward that allowed us to protect the city's investment and achieve the original version of the public-private partnership that would enhance our downtown. These settlement discussions were time intensive and were hindered by various factors including the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact that has had on the hospitality industry. Today, I am announcing that the city and Village River Group LLC have entered into a settlement agreement, which will allow a clean and final end to the development agreement and a path forward for the city to immediately proceed with improving the appearance of and developing the site of the downtown parking ramp. This agreement recognizes that Village River Group had invested considerable funds into planning for the private development of this site. VRG has also incurred hard costs in building components that will be of use in the future when we find the right partner to take on this opportunity again. For that reason, the settlement agreement includes reimbursement of $500,000 from the city of Sioux Falls to VRG for a portion of the hard costs it's leaving at the site, as well as reimbursement of the $150,000 developer fee that was previously paid to the city. Development projects are difficult enough for the private sector, let alone when you add in a public partnership. And the bottom line here is that development is difficult and risky, and so is litigation. I had an obligation to consider those risks and the cost of pursuing a long path to costly litigation that negatively impacted the city's youths of the site and prevented the city from taking advantage of the growing market for development downtown. I also had to cons consider the value that VRG has put into that site and would leave at the site for future use. The settlement agreement is the resolution of all those interests and now it's time to look ahead. So what's next? Where do we go next with this project? Well, process is very important. And the process used to award the previous request for qualifications, a development agreement, and assignment of VRG to serve as the developer of this project is not a process that my administration will follow in the future. And in fact, we haven't used that process during my time in office. My team has successfully used the negotiated sale process to sell two parcels of our rail yard development land and one downtown surface parking lot. To move forward with the private development opportunity on this site, we will begin working to clearly define expectations for a future developer and development. And ultimately, we will select a partner who will use this site to add to the exciting growth that is already taking place downtown. So we're excited that we can now begin that process. So with me today uh, is lead city attorney, Stacy Koistra, as well as our outside counsel that's helped us through this process, 
Bill Fuller and Hillary Williamson, and my Chief of Staff, Erica Beck. So with that being said, we would certainly open things up to any questions that you may have on this announcement. Any ideas where you want to go moving forward? We want to maximize that site. You know, the original plan that we all bought into and were excited about was for a 15-story building to be on that site. Uh, it was a hotel that had retail. Uh, right now, as mentioned in, uh, in my previous remarks, the hospitality industry is an interesting one uh, post-COVID. We also have some absorption we have to realize with now the canopy being built on the Steel District site. And, and so the city at this point is focused more on doing things right than doing things quick. So uh, now that this settlement agreement has been reached, we're going to see what opportunities come up. Uh, we're not committing to any timeline uh, to get that done. We just want to do what's right for that project and maximizes the value for downtown. So, Paul, are you waiting for companies um, to come to you with ideas? Uh, now that will be the process, and we'll be opening up that uh, negotiated land sale process just like we have did with our downtown parcels as we go forward. So I think there's been interest. I, I would assume there's interest out there. Um, but people have not approached us, and justifiably so, because they wanted to wait for uh, this day to come. So I can say with entire uh, certainty and confidence, our administration has had zero conversations with anyone else in the industry about that site because our focus has been on the project, working with, through this with the developer and getting to a, a good resolution. Is, is DRG eligible to come back to the idea? Uh, it's a great question. I don't believe they're excluded from submitting again, are they? Um, so what do you want to, they're not excluded. Um, they would certainly be welcome to submit. I'd be surprised if they do. Um, that being said, and I've mentioned this before, city harbors no ill will towards VRG, uh, towards guarantors, towards anyone in this project. Development is hard and messy. Uh, and a public-private partnership, they, they can be difficult. Uh, and this proved that uh, you know, to be the case. Uh, but we're open to anyone who wants to submit a project that will maximize that property, given the investments we've made in it to date. And you mentioned guarantors. I think the natural question here is those, those gentlemen have guaranteed delivery of this project. Uh, obviously, that they haven't delivered. Uh, can you tell us why you guys decided to, to, to reach a settlement agreement? Yeah. I'm going to turn it over to City Attorney Stacy Koyster on that one. Yeah, Joe, I'd, I'd be a little careful with the conclusion that they haven't delivered. Okay, um, one of the things when you look at the $500,000 settlement uh, reimbursement from the city, it's really a, a twofold analysis. That that payment, right in the form of a check, but also the value that exists in the property. Okay, because the private developer contributed to the, the foundation as it exists now, because as the mayor referenced, it's now built for a 15 story project, right? It wasn't initially contemplated to be 15 stories. And so that took additional contributions from the private developer to add that height. And so when you look at the numbers, there's, we estimate $690,000 in additional value in the foundation that the city will ultimately be able to take advantage of as it moves forward. And as the mayor alluded to in his comments, there's $150,000 that the city received in a development fee that is a component of the reimbursement. So I realize the $500,000 is going to get the attention, uh, but really when you look at the numbers, it's not one where uh, the city is necessarily out anything. In fact, there's a strong argument the city came out ahead. Now you have to understand with litigation, and I get this is a long lawyerly answer, right? Uh, but you have damages claims from both parties, right? And at the end of the day, there's a certain element of offset in what those claims would be. And what this settlement agreement provides, which will be public, is that those claims are all waived. And so when you do the value analysis, the 500000 is really only one component of that. I wouldn't expect anything less. Thanks, Joe. I don't, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll take a shot at that one because um, as, as far as the city being disadvantaged, um, in, in some respects that, that, that predates me and it predates this administration, right? So there was a process that occurred there um, that resulted in 
contractual agreements, a development agreement, the terms of which were the terms, right? And um, when it comes to why did the city come to this point, it was very public at one point that the city uh, sent out a notice of intent to terminate the project due to various concerns, right? And so uh, you can look at the agreement and if you're asking is there a fatal flaw or a defect in the agreement, at some point the parties contracted legally and the terms were what they were. There became an execution component of that that led to, you know, the notice of intent to terminate, the litigation component, and uh, fast forward two, three years, and, and here we are on the settlement piece. So. There's a, to follow on that, there's a notion that the city didn't really have any, any exercise, any oversight over, over guarantors in terms of like what kind of finances that the, the city could they prove they could you know, be involved in this development. Am I misreading that? Or? Well, I, first of all, I haven't heard that. Uh, second of all, I don't think that a lack of resources was the concern at that point. And, and again, the, the litigation at this point comp consisted of a summons being served on the city by VRG, right? Um, in the event that we went further into the litigation piece, there would have been answers, claims, counterclaims, third party claims where that would have been vetted. And so um, as far as the analysis as to whether they had the means to make the city whole, again, you come back to the analysis of, of the value and the waiver of the claims to really determine uh, what the agreement was here today. Other questions for us today? Oh, sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Megan. Oh, thank you. Um, is there a concern, you know, the, there's the parking ramp that exists today was sort of built to hold quite a bit of weight on top of that 15 story building. Is there a concern that, you know, moving forward with another developer, maybe they come with like a five story building or a smaller project, um, and, and then now that ramp has been sort of overbuilt mm -hmm. for what is actually ends up being there? It, it, or how are you weighing that moving forward? Well, that kind of goes to, you know, my earlier comments about maximizing the site, right? So we have the ability to have a really a hallmark signature develop there, development there. And so I think putting a two-story building on top of that ramp, if a proposal came to us like that, we'd say, hey, this is great. This is not the best use for that property. So we're going to weigh that with the proposals that we'll see going forward to determine what maximizes the value of the investment we've made on that site going forward. I would add a comment to that too, Megan, which is the, the, the attractiveness of the site in the sense that the, part of this agreement and the waiver of claims is that the property is free and clear. And so there is a discretion component to what would be built there, but there's also the fact that this is an existing, clean, uh, developable site. Um, and this is just a, a brief aside is, is we didn't know as, as we came into this process that COVID was coming, right? And so one of the things about it, having a clean development site is that there isn't a building that's one third constructed on top of a public parking ramp, right? And so uh, there's a tremendous amount of relief in the sense that this is now free and clear, it's done and it's very developable to maximize the, the property itself. So Tom, did you have a question? She asked my question. Oh, all right, well, there you go. Other questions for us? All right. Well, hearing no more, thanks for joining us today. You guys have a great weekend.